Lunchables have lead in them. What? Oh my god, Lunchables have lead in them? They got 74% of the maximum allowable dose? We have maximum allowable doses of lead? Oh no, that's in California because there is no... There is no federal limits. All right, I want to talk about a few things here. First, I want to put this risk into a little bit more perspective. And second of all, I do want to talk about the federal limits or the lack of federal limits for things like lead in foods. So Consumer Reports comes out with these studies uh, every once in a while for different types of foods, showing the amount of things like lead and cadmium in different kinds of foods. And instead of actually giving the actual amounts, they are always comparing it to the Prop 65 limits of these things. Prop 65 is that label that you may have seen on food in California saying that it has the potential to cause cancer or something like that. It's on tons of different foods in California. I've talked about it before, how it's not very helpful to the consumer. When you have the levels set so low that it's not an actual level that is necessarily harmful. And Consumer Reports is reporting this number as a percentage, 74% was the highest one in one of these Lunchables. That is 74% of the California maximum allowable dose level, which is that Prop 65 level. These maximum allowable dose levels are the exposure levels at which a chemical would have no observable reproduction productive effect even if a person were exposed to 1,000 times that level. So that's where those percentages are coming from in that Consumer Reports report. ADL for lead is 0.5 micrograms per day. This level is considerably lower than the amount in normal daily serving sizes of fruits, vegetables, and herbs. However, if it's naturally occurring, it doesn't count towards the level that is set for this Prop 65 label. So yes, even fruits and vegetables that you're eating are going to have some level of lead in it, and it could even be over that MADL. I'm not trying to scare you about fresh fruits and vegetables, but just giving you a perspective of if this level were to be enforced for fruits and vegetables, that warning would also have to be on a lot of different fruits and vegetables as well. That would exceed that extremely low threshold. The FDA has set interim reference levels for things like lead. This is a benchmark that the FDA can use to see if there is a potential health concern for a contaminant like lead in food. This IRL for lead is 2.2 micrograms per day for children and 8.8 .8 micrograms per day for people of childbearing age. So if we were to go back and do the math of those scary looking numbers, 24% would end up being 16% of the IRL. In addition, the IRL includes a 10 times safety factor. So it's nearly 10 times lower than the amount of lead intake from food that would be required to reach the CDC's blood reference level. Now the FDA does test food for environmental contaminants like lead in order to monitor the safety of the food supply. However, there are not limits set that companies have to test for and have to make sure they are under those levels. Of course, things like lead are in the soil, so it is going to be in food. So obviously zero is not a realistic level to be set. However, I don't disagree that there should be levels set by the FDA that companies have to test for to ensure that the food is below those levels. However, what these reports also do is cause some mass panic and a lot of fear, which isn't necessarily warranted. But as a parent, reading these reports can be very scary, so I just wanted to put that risk into perspective as well.